Hello, my name is Tien Nguyen. On behalf of the Babar Collaboration, I am going to present our results from the search for astronaut-like particles in the B-meson decay at Babar experiment. Astronaut-like particles are low-mass pseudo goldstein boson, which arise from an anomalous global symmetry breaking, such as chiral symmetry breaking. They appear in many beyond standard model physics, like supersymmetry and string theory. They can also be a solution for the strong CP problem. They can interact with the standard model gate boson through a fermion loop which is proportional to the gate anomaly. The coupling Lagrangian with the gate field is shown on the top left figure. As we know, dark matter interacts with standard model matter in an extremely weak manner. Thus, we suspect there are some new particles that act at the portal between the Higgs receptor and the standard model. Because axon like particle can naturally have any mass, and its coupling strength is inversely proportional to the scale of the spontaneous symmetry breaking is quite feeble. They are ideal candidates for submediator to the hidden sector through so-called axon portal. Brief research for axon like particle has focused on axon coupling with photon. However, because uh, the standard model of photon is a linear combination between the hypertrop and the SU2 gate field, Axion coupling with photon in light axion can also couple with W or Z bosons. In this search, we specifically look for axion like particle in B meson decay where they couple with W boson as shown in the Feynman diagram. Note that the standard model favorite change in meson decay is of the same order or even smaller than the axion production in the weak interaction. In this search, axion are assumed to couple with SU2 gate field. Then we look for axion in the B meson decay into K on and axion, and the axion decay into a pair of photons. This process is fully reconstructable and has a very low background, which are dominated by the continuum Q, C, D, and B, B bar processes with the QED background subdominant. In this process, we take the branching fraction of axion like decay into a pair of photons to be almost 100%, and axion mass is much smaller than the electroweak boson masses. This is the first search for axon like particle in this decay. The figure shown here presents the existing limit of axon like particle coupling with W boson. Our goal is to fill up the empty space and get the branching fraction limit up to 10 to the minus 6 as predicted with the blue line. Also, note that for the axon mass below 0.1 GV, almost all the reasons is excluded, so we will start our search at 0.1 GV and go forward. Before getting into the detail, let's take a quick look at the Babar experiment. It is a low energy asymmetric electron positron collider that was operated from 1999 to 2008. It produced epsilon 4s at a very high rate with the luminosity of more than 400 inverse femtoborn, which then decayed to more than 200 million pairs of drop B mesons. First, let me summarize the analysis and strategy we use in the search. We perform a applied analysis to optimize our method on 8% of the data before applying into the full data to avoid bias. Eventually, we want to look for a narrow peak of the diphoton invariant mass spectrum from the B meson decay into K on and axion and the axion decay into a diphoton. Because we search for axon like particle in the mass range from 0.1 GV to the maximum allowed mass in this process, 4.78 GV, we expected to see background picking from standard model meson resonance, pion, eta, and eta bra. To account for this irreducible background, we include axon hypothesis mass in their picking interval. The other irreducible background comes from the B meson decay into K on and a pair of photons which have a very small branch infraction, thus subdominant. Next, we train out the boosted decision tree to separate signal event from the predominant background. We then extract the signal by scanning the diphoton invariant mass spectrum for axon candidate pick the path through all of our selection. Finally, we measure the branch infraction for axon production from B meson decay. However, for light axion, they can be long-lived. Thus, for the mass range below 2.5 GV, we also determine signal branch infraction for three different lifetimes of 1, 10, and 100 mm. 
not that for astronaut mass greater than 2.5 GV because the light time is inversely proportional to the mass cube, the light time is spread, and we do not look for long lived astronauts beyond this limit. For the Monte Carlo simulation, we create 24 astronaut mass points for the probe decay and 16 astronaut mass points for the long lived decay. Each map point has 30,000 events. Meanwhile, the Monte Carlo background assembly is generated and weighted to the data luminosity, which includes the predominant background from QCD and BB bar as well as the subdominant background from QED. We also simulated the detector response based on Germ4. Before we change our abilities, we apply some loose cut on some variables to get rid much of the obvious background, which can easily tell from the Monte Carlo simulations. This will help the abilities to focus on more subtle differences rather than the obvious differences. The two variables we use here are the delta E, the energy difference between the beam and the beam meson in the center of mass frame, and the second variable is the beam energy substitute mass. We also perform the kinetic fit that require the diphoton and kion to be orig originated from the beam meson candidate using beam spot, beam energy constraint, and beam meson uh, mass constraints. This would help reduce the energy uncertainty of the photon energy and could have narrowed the width of the signal. We train the BDTs for the QCD and the BB bar background using the gradient boosting method. We also train and test the BDT classifier using Ruti MVA algorithm. After multiple trials, we shorten our list of training variables to 13 as shown here. Beside the delta E and the beam energy uh, substitute mass variables I mentioned earlier, we have other variables that demonstrate the difference between the signal and background via the expected beam geometry angle, invariant masses, and energy of the beam component. Of course, be beside the resulting diphoton invariant mass that we try to construct here. We also have the multiplicity of the neutral cluster and the constraint on photon energy that correspond to the standard model meson resonance. After the training and testing, we found the optimal cut for QCD continuum background to be 0.13 and for the BB bar background to be 0.15, which we can apply to all the masses thanks to the fact that our BDT are not biased in respect to axion like particle masses. An example of axion mass of 1 GeV is shown in the figure. We can see that not only that, after the cut, the signal and background shape are, in, are distinguishable, but also that the Monte Carlo simulation is in a very good agreement with the data. The figure here shows the diaphragm mass spectrum after the cuts on BDTs. We can clearly see the meson resonance background picking, which is why we do not use the interval for the BDTs. We can also offer a small peak at the ether charm mass, which we then perform a signal extraction procedure to look for the B meson decay into K on and ether charm, ether charm decay into pale photon. We see a local significance of 2.6 sigma, which is consistent with the world average branching fraction. In fact, because there are so few events, the excess here is smaller than so of all the axon signal excesses everywhere. So we assume all the events here are signal and set a conservative limit for axon at this mass. Next, we fix the signal Monte Carlo distribution with a double sided crystal ball function and take the parameter sigma of the Gaussian component at the resolution. To obtain more hypothetical mass point, we construct a linear interpolation of signal histogram uh, between the adjacent signal points. Uh, we check our signal resolution by comparing the data and the Monte Carlo of the standard model B meson K into K on and, a, and a standard model meson. We found an agreement within 3%, which is pretty good. We also derive the signal efficiency for Monte Carlo, which is approximately 30% over most of the mass range. 
We then scan the diaphragm environment mass spectrum with the step size equal to the signal resolution we determined earlier. There are a total of 476 hypothesis mass points, in, including the masses near of the pion at time at top run. Then we extract the signal by a series of unbeam maxima likelihood fit over a smooth background where the fit window are symmetric and then the length of the window are in range of dust minus 30 to 70 times the signal width which is determined from the Monte Carlo. The window fit very depend on the astronaut mass and whether or not it in the prox uh, proximity of the meson resonant picking. Uh, the likelihood function include the signal and the continuum background PDFs. If the window of a fit include either the background picking of pion, eta, or eta prime, we also add that PDF into the likelihood function. The signal PDF from Monte Carlo and are linearly interpolated between simulated masses. The continuum background PDFs are second order Jebusev polynomial for astronaut mass below 1.35 GV and a first order polynomial for higher mass range. The picking PDF is model at the sum of the signal template and a broader Gaussian distribution, which capture the contribution of the continuum to this meson production. There are two samples of the signal fig. Uh, on the left is the signal at point 0.3 GV, which the fig window includes both background and picking a pion eta. You can see from the data minor background that there is no signal picking for this mass. Uh, similar for signal at 2.0 uh, GV, there is no signal picking for the data minor background. However, they are negative significant here. Also, not a much higher number of events in the meson picking in comparison to the signal event. Here we see the result of all our fit after the selection cut and extraction. On the top is the number of signal events, and on the bottom is the signal significance. We can see some high local significance close to 1 GV, 3 GV, and 3.5 GV. However, when we include the trial factor to account for the look ill wells effect, the most significant excess drop to below 1 sigma. So we do not observe any significant signal. Now let's talk about the systematic uncertainty. The most important systematic uncertainty arises from the shape of the signal fit. We assess it by varying the order of the polynomial continuum background, adjusting the shape of the picking background within the uncertainties, and using the next nearest neighbor for the signal interpolation. This uncertainty can dominate the total uncertainty for some masses in the vicinity of pion and eta due to the difficulty on describing the total background. Besides, we also assess the uncertainties from varying the signal shape with the signal efficiencies. The rest of the system many uncertainty are dominant, but we also include them in the final result. So without any significant signal, we draw the branch function at 90% confidence level using Bayesian limit. We take in the flat prior for the non-negative value of the branch function, and then convert the likelihood function with the Gaussian distribution where we take the systematic uncertainty at the standard deviation. So as you can see in the figure, we get a very strong limit in the branching fraction for many masses, which is below 10 to minus 7. We exceed our expectation of 10 to minus 6 as I showed earlier. For your perspective, this is a very powerful constraint for astronaut light particle. However, to map the branching fraction limit to the coupling limit, we have to consider the fact that astronaut can be long-lived for light masses. We apply the same analysis for long-lived astronaut with three different lifetimes of 1, 10, and 100 mm. The only thing difference is that we use a single-sided crystal function to fit the signal and extract the cell, uh, resolution. This could create a bias in the reconstruction of the signal mass at longer lifetime because the 
photons are reconstructed, assuming they be, uh, they coming from the beam spot. However, they are not. The consequence can be seen in the two sample signal fits below at 1 GV. For the shock light time 1 mm, the peak is almost at 1 GV and have a broken width. It gets worse for the longer light time at 100 mm. The peak clearly shifts to the left and has a very long tail. The signal long tail created difficult on separating the signal tail from the continuum background, which in turn increased the systematic uncertainty of the background shape and the window width. The other systematic uncertainty is unchanged. There is unfortunately no significant signal found, so we derive a branching fraction limit at 90% confidence level as shown in the figures. At short light time from 1 to 10 mm, the difference is not much. However, at longer light time, like 100 mm, we can see a very clear difference. Finally, we derive the limit on axon coupling to W boson from the derived branch infraction limit at a function of light time. We can do so because the coupling can be used to predict both branch infraction and light time. From the figure, we can see that we included a lot of bridges. And for many masses, apart from the standard model measure interval, we improve the coupling limit by over two orders of magnitude. If we invert the coupling, we can have a rough idea of what the mass scale of the new phase is, which is about 10 to 100 TeV. In conclusion, we are the first group to search for axion light particles in the B meson decay into K ion and axion, axion decay into a pair of photons. Unfortunately, there is no significant signal. Even talk we observe some local significances. However, we improve the constraint on the axon light particle coupling with W boson by over two order of magnitude, which cross, uh, corresponding to four order of magnitude in branch infraction limit for many masses, except for the mass interval of pion, eta, and eta prime. This set also demonstrates that the flavor changing meson decay are excellent block for axon light particle coupling with electro quick uh, gauge bosons. Finally, even that the Burba experiment finished its running in 2008, the Burba collaboration still extensively contributes to the search for hidden sector and more results are expected in the near future. Thank you very much for seeing my talk. I am happy to answer your question in the live flavor and precision physics panel 1 at 8.30 a.m. Central Time, June 11.